Hi guys, and welcome to a very exciting vlog. This morning, it's about 9 a.m., we are going to head over to the east coast of Florida to check out the Rolex 24 happening at the Daytona International Speedway. Now, as you might guess from the name, the Rolex 24 is a 24-hour race, usually happening around the last weekend of January. Now, this race is gonna have Corvettes, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, as well as some Daytona prototypes. And we're also going to be camping out at the Daytona International Speedway. So come along, it's gonna be a fun weekend. It's about 1240 and the race starts about an hour from now and we were just told that we're like 10th in line for a camping spot so my first piece of advice is to get here as early as you can but an attendant is actively going around the parking lot looking for spots so hopefully we'll get one soon and get to enter the race soon all right so 45 minutes later my advice remains to get here very early and again these camping grounds do open i believe thursday before the race today is saturday if you can get here early make a long weekend of it it seems like they've maybe oversold this campground but we are next on the list However, we've waited almost an hour. So we have gotten our campground. We are in between these two people. We will somehow find room for our two tents here. And this is actually a very, very large campground. I didn't realize how big it was till we started driving back here. Looks like we're pretty close to the back. So now we are on our way back to the front and to start watching the race. a good 10 15 minute walk from our campsite but you can see the stands of the daytona international speedway right there so i think next up is getting our bags checked scanning our tickets and watching the race i'm sure they have these all over but we just walked up the steps right there to the main entrance this is where we're by and you can see they have several different charging options for you very important in a 24-hour race Now we're going into the infield entry. Last year, if I remember correctly, that is where like that Ferris wheel is. Uh, you can get a lot closer to the track this way. There's a lot of RV parking out here. The cool thing about walking to the infield is you get to walk in this tunnel area right on, I think we're right under the race course. So even if you aren't interested in seeing what is in the infield, I would recommend at least walking in this tunnel because it is kind of cool. And then you may get to hear things like that as well. You can probably hear this is the center where you want to be. If you have an RV, this is where you want to be. in this brochure that I got for the event. This Ferris wheel is supposedly the tallest Ferris wheel on the East Coast. This seems to be a very popular spot and rightfully so. There's a lot of food trucks here and quick serve items that you can grab for lunch. This smells drew us in, so we are gonna grab some lunch here. I'm gonna choose Woodson's Wrap Shack and I think I'm gonna get the Buffalo Loaded Chips, which are hand cut uh, chips. Here are my buffalo chips. This is my first real food of the day. I've just been snacking. So this looks delicious right about now. Now this is the fan zone. Lots of food options here as well as a stage set up on that far side for any entertainment that they may do. Also a lot of seating if you want to, you know, take a 
break from your feet and watch the race on the on the screen there. Just a good place for, as you might guess it, fans to hang out. This is probably my favorite thing I've seen today. This is a Hudson Hornet that was made specifically for Paul Newman for the premiere of Cars at the Lowe's Motor Speedway. You can even see in the front here, it looks like Doc is just about ready to talk to us. Oh, this is so cool. Night is falling on the campsites at the Daytona International Speedway. Look at this sunset. And something else I'd like to point out is right across the way is actually the Daytona Beach International Airport. And you can see just how close the planes are to us. Lots of sounds and smells to be had at the campground. You can see all the campfires starting up as the sun is going down. The fun is just beginning with almost 20 hours still left to race here at the Rolex 24. Safe and sound. 
I can't tell you how warm and nice this tent feels right now after walking through this kind of chilly weather and just smelling, you know, the campfires as everyone wound down for the night. It was so nice just walking back here while still hearing those cars roaring in the background. So we are done for the night, but plan to wake up bright and early for more racing here at the Rolex 24.